you're recording, you're recording, you're recording. Oh man, can't be looking at my hair. There we go. There's the costume. Hello, and welcome to an unboxing and legit checking guide for the Air Jordan 1 Retro OG University Blue. At the time of filming, this shoe is between 13 and 15 months old, based on the production date ranges on the inside of the shoe. This dead stock pair is a size men's 10 and a half US release. Now please understand that quality control deviations can and will occur on retails. And do not necessarily discredit their authenticity. So consider this guide a solid example and not a solid absolute. This is a standard Air Jordan 1 black shoe box with red branding. The US release will have the suggested retail tab on the box label with the 170 USD price point. Canadian releases should have something similar and most of the rest of the world doesn't have a suggested retail tab. The style code is 555-088-134 and the official colors are white, black, university blue. The metric box dimensions are 35 by 24 by 12. Whoop. There is a code on the inside of the lid in red ink. This particular one is not very legible, though I think I can make out a date of 1223, which coincides with the production date ranges on the inside of the shoe. A dead stock pair should have paper over the shoes, and there is a YCM sticker on the inside of the box. This dead stock pair has the lace bag neatly attached to the lateral side of the left shoe on the top lace hole. A dead stock pair should only be laced in the first pair of lace holes and the rest of the lace should be knotted, neatly placed underneath the cardboard insert. A UV test on this shoe will probably reveal glue, possibly staining some of the new buck. Man. This release was notorious. Acting. Man. This release was notorious for glue stains. And any retail that I've personally had in hand had them. They are a normal aspect of this retail release. But, <clears throat> but a word on UV light testing. UV light can be a great authentication tool, but it should never be your be all end all. Many replicas will pass a UV light test, and if you rely solely on a UV light test, that is a great way to get burned on a replica. The squeeze test, where you squeeze the outsole under the back of the toe box, should have lots of resistance. The light blue outsole has a semi-gloss finish. The rand has a very neat double stitch around the vamp. The PVC coating makes a tumble on the white composite leather of the shoe, but the tumble depth is pretty inconsistent on this release. Even on this pair, some tumbling has very deep grooves and some doesn't. The University Blue Nubuck shows some life with movement, but it's unremarkable. The top of the heel tab is tightly stitched down with no loop at the top. The black composite leather on the swoosh and the collar are also tumbled inconsistently. The wing's logo placement can vary, but the wing length should be 5.5 centimeters. The lace slits on the tongue are 1.4 centimeters apart. The tongue tag has a microscopic space around the inner registered trademark circle. The bottom of the swoosh is round. Duh, but many replicas tend to have flat spots here. And on the back of the tongue tag, the Q in quality does have the line on the inside of the Q. The insoles are blue ortholite insoles with parallel glue patterns going up about 80% of the underside. The insoles have a black cotton top with a screen printed Nike Air logo on the heel and the edge fidelity is unremarkable. The size tag factory code on the top right is HX and there is a QR code that links you to Nike.com. The footbeds have a gray foam strobel with two visible guide holes and a good amount of white stitching. 
If you thought this guide was helpful, please give a like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notification. If you thought this guide was helpful, then please give a like, subscribe, and ring that bell for all future notifications. And remember, real sneakerheads show love.